As Gaethje and Khabib gets closer, the fight and the perception of the fight, at least for me, continually can is changing. It seemed as though a pretty obvious fight. Khabib is going to beat him. Now, that seemed a little bit obvious because Gaethje didn't belong in the mix in the first place. He wasn't even supposed to be in the interim championship. He took it on short notice, gets on there with Tony. And if you look at the odds makers before the fight, even if you look into your own memories, everybody thought Gaethje was going to get beat. I'm not convinced Gaethje didn't think Gaethje was going to get beat. I think one of the more surprised guys that night was Gaethje. I think he started to build confidence as that fight went on. I, went on. I think there was a snowball effect. And... So when that fight gets, okay, it's going to be Gaethje and Khabib, there was even discussion going on of, are they going to take this from Gaethje? Now that this is done, but this is not the fight that it was ever supposed to be, are they going to find a way to take this from Gaethje and just insert Connor into the conversation? I don't know if that was actually a thing that went in the office. I never heard Dana ever hedge on that, but that was at least a discussion that the fans were having. Many media were saying it, and not a lot of people were pushing back. A lot of people were going, look, Justin, you had your one good night and off we go, but as time has gone on, and we were able to appreciate what Justin did with Tony. And we do start to look at, this is a very different match. Just skill-wise, this is a very different match. When you're talking about Khabib, you're talking about the best gas tank in MMA. That is an intangible that simply cannot be seen by the audience, but it is felt, respected, and feared by his opponents. Athletes can see when a guy can push as hard in the fifth round as he did in the first round. A combat athlete's biggest fear is not losing. It's not even getting hurt. His biggest fear is exhaustion. His biggest fear is he's in the locker room or walking to that cage or getting ready to touch hands is, do I have the energy to hold up at the end of the night? Can I follow the most basic rule of the sport? Can I protect myself at all times? And as the fight begins to get going, that question is still the biggest question in his mind. Do I have enough energy to go throughout the night. So when you're dealing with Khabib and you're dealing with somebody who can get in there and possibly stop him, that is ultimately the question that you first have to ask. It's not, can I stop the takedown? It's not, can I take him down? It's not, can I punch with him? Can I kick with him? Can I keep my back off the fence? All of those will be questions. The biggest question though, do I have enough time to get into the shape to protect myself at all times should this go the duration of 25 minutes? Justin Gaethje does not have the best gas tank in the UFC. However... Justin Gaethje has never backed down because he's been tired. So we're not saying the same thing, but at the same time, we are coming to the same result. I am here to tell you, no matter how deep this fight goes or whose heart rate is, is higher, or whose heart is pumping out of their chest more, Justin Gaethje is not going to back down any more than Khabib. And that's almost the first that we've ever been able to say that going into a fight. So you have a bit of a lock there. You do. Does conditioning favor Khabib? Yes, it does. Does it matter? If Gaethje doesn't break under pressure, which he doesn't, does it matter? Tough question, but you have to consider it. And when you look at the match itself, Justin Gaethje has an opinion. Okay, Three, in fact. Not get taken down. Not have his back on the fence. I love that he understood that one. That's a big one. Don't have your back on the fence because that's what starts the takedown. But he also said in a different interview, if I kick him the right kick four times, this fight's changed. And I know what he means when he's saying that. I was fighting at middleweight to personalize this. I was fighting at middleweight and I had my first IV. This was when IV, you know, IV was no problem, but I'd never had one. So I had my first IV. I left the arena and, and before I left my hotel room to go down to the marina, it was Mandalay Bay. So you leave your hotel, you walk right to the arena. You never have to go outside. It's all, all in one. Before I left, the last thing I did before I put my gear on was I got on the scale. I bring my own scale, had one in the bathroom. I was 207 pounds fighting at middleweight. Now, technically 207 makes you a heavyweight, right? Anything above 205 is a heavyweight. I remember thinking, I'm, I'm a heavyweight. And I remember telling Clayton, I, told, I was getting ready to fight Nate Marquardt. It was the number one contender's fight. And I told Clayton, I said, Coach, I weigh 207 pounds. I said, if I, I'm a heavyweight. If I get on top of him one time, I'm going to change the fight. And I really believed that, but I knew that to be true. And I only bring that in because Justin Gaethje believes this to be true. And I think that he's right. The right four kicks by Justin Gaethje does change the fight. Justin will hurt you. But moreover than that is you're talking about shutting Khabib down. Khabib is coming up forward. He doesn't go lateral. He damn sure doesn't go back. He doesn't even stand his ground. He comes forward. 
Well, you can slow a guy down. Now, finding those kicks on a guy coming at you is hard to do. But to Justin's point, if he can find the right four kicks, he can stop some of that forward momentum. If he could ever, if he could land six kicks and make Khabib switch stances, which Khabib probably is not going to do ever. But if he did, you just change the fight completely. But guy is Southpaw or Orthodox, he's one of those two. He is not both, dependent on the time. I mean, I really agree with Justin. Now, there's a lot of ifs here. We all understand that. But when you do look at the great intangible, which is the pace, and there's only been a couple of guys who over the history of sport have weaponized pace. Started in 1972 at the Olympic Games with a guy named Dan Gable. But it has built from there. Randy Couture took that concept into MMA, but he was the first to do it. Nobody really matched Randy on pace until a young man named George St. Pierre came along. And ultimately, then Khabib came along. There's not a whole lot of athletes in any field who can make you break by just being able to go harder than you. But they do exist. And when they exist, they're a problem. Khabib is in better shape than Justin Gaethje. He is a better gas tank. But Justin Gaethje isn't going to wilt. So does it matter? 